We're back in the shop for another day of working on this Murphy bed build. And uh, last week we were milling up a bunch of poplar and we actually ran out of the rough cut poplar, of course, which is a bummer because it's pretty far away to go get it and it doesn't make sense to go get just a little bit more. So we ended up having to still buy some uh, pre-milled poplar and spent almost as much on these few boards as we did on the entire lot of rough cut, which is a bummer but it's still more cost effective than driving all the way back there, bringing it back and milling up just a few boards. However, I'm always uh, about to start finishing up these last few pieces that we missed out on. And then we can actually start assembling things and doing the sort of the detailed uh, cuts on some of the cabinet pieces. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. We got your sheet. Good to get. After I got done with the rest of those cuts, it's finally time to start assembling the bed. Real simple part here. Now when I'm screwing them together, that's it. These inner frame struts are just put together with glue and screws and be sure to pre-drill. Don't forget that. Once all five of those are done, they can be assembled to the inner frame sides. had to put all the trim pieces up here for the doors to get a little sneak peek of the way this thing's going to turn out and uh, yeah everything looks pretty good so far in between each of these there will be an uh, a fluted panel so there's another detail that goes into here and uh, we'll probably be cutting that fluted panel tomorrow but yeah this is uh it's looking pretty great this is, this is, we're constructing this different than the plans for those hardware goes. I haven't really talked about that at all, but we're doing some things that are, that are different. And so uh, I think it's gonna turn out really well. We're trying to make this not a DIY bed. This is a professional build for a professional client. So we're doing some things that are a little different one of those things being is that there's no exposed plywood edges and there will be as little edge banding as humanly possible on this. So yeah, I think it's going to turn out pretty good and uh, so far things things look like they're lining up. So I think, I think, we're, doing it, I think we're doing it right. Did I do good? You did pretty good. <laughs> I forgot, kind of forgot about that. Yeah, you cut all these boards. Look at there. <laughs> Gotta have a bit more faith in yourself. So iFixit sent us over two new products. This is their iFixit fix mat, which is something I'm really excited about. I'll open it up and show you guys in a second. But also, this is the Mahi Precision Bit Set, which looks like it's going to be really nice because it comes with the larger driver and a lot of larger bits. So let's check it out. This is my favorite driver because it is very solid and heavy, which is important because it allows you to be able to actually feel it better and get better dexterity. 
has this nice little knob on the back so that you can free spin and hold it. And it has a really nice rubberized end here, which means that you're not going to mar up any delicate surfaces, which you are typically working on when using something like this. And as you can see, these are nice and magnetized. They click in. See that? Oh, it's very satisfying and they don't just fall out. This is a product that I am very excited about. As someone who's constantly taking things apart, this is gonna help me keep things organized. So what this is, is a magnetic, basically dry erase board. So as you put your little parts and pieces on it, they stick and stay in one place. It comes with this really nice magnetic pin here and allows you to draw on here, label parts and keep them separated. Also, you have little tiny part bins up here if you have anything that isn't magnetic. And it, you can also put you know, what the project is. You can have a handful of these if you're working on a lot of projects at the same time. And yeah, this is a game changer because look at the current state of uh, my project. So now that I have all my small parts labeled and put away, I can put all of my big parts back in a box. And then all of these small parts are now in a convenient place that won't just rattle loose. You see how they're magnetized? If I lift this up, they're not falling down, which is so nice. They're not just scattering around and getting mixed all together. I even put in a little schematic here for this resistor that popped off that needs to go back onto the robot head, which is up here. And yeah, look at how nice that is. That is amazing. Even this tiny little resistor, this magnet is enough, has enough strength to hold that in place. So this is a really awesome product. I'm very excited to be able to use this for so many different applications to be able to set things on here, label them. It's gonna be really, really nice. So thank you iFixit for sponsoring this video and continuing to fight for our right to repair and making these awesome products like you see in front of me. We're actually partnering with iFixit all throughout February for Fix It February, which is something we started last year. This year we are building a DIY camper, which you're not gonna to wanna to miss, so get subscribed. Thanks again iFixit. There's links in the description below if you're interested in any of these products. Let's get back to the video. All right says we have today to get all of this done. I don't really want to, but I have no other choice. Another day here in the shop. We've got to do a lot more stuff today because uh, yesterday we chose to uh, procrastinate quite a lot and had some uh, other obligations to take to. So today, it's a makeup day. So let's see how much we can actually get done in the shop. You know, because we got to. <laughs> go team go. Go team go. <laughs> Today is more of a detailed day. We pre-drilled for all the hardware, cut the radius into the bedside rails, and added edge banding, both traditional edge banding and hardwood edge banding. The side rails of the bed actually get this curved front here. That allows the bed to actually open, so it has to have this curve here or some type of corner chopped off. And uh, 
It's a little complicated to do because you also have to put edge banding on the top here. And if you just go and cut this with a jigsaw, which we've done in the past on these, on these uh, kits before, and you just sort of do your best to make it square and you sand it and make it square. The problem is, is that it's rarely perfect, which means that when you do your edge banding, you see the imperfections in the edge banding because it's not perfectly flat and your edge banding wants, wants to pop up in certain places because the cut kind of goes like this. And uh, yeah, it makes it sort of a nightmare. So this time around, we used the uh, CNC to make ourselves some templates. We obviously could have just cut this on the CNC, um, but it was much easier to rip all this down on the table saw and, uh, and then just use a simple template to, to get this perfect. So just line the template up and use it to uh, flush trim the edge. But also while we were there, we also made the, the hole that needs to go in here. So it's, it's good because now we're gonna have perfect alignment, like things are gonna be, you know, as, as close to perfect as they can be. But more so than that, it makes the edge banding go on so much better. Now the kit that we're using actually comes with a template, but it's a paper template. So you still end up with the same issues. So, you know, I'm kind of considering throwing these up on the website if you guys are interested and uh, selling just this uh, one template or perhaps the opposite side template for the other hole on the other side. This one is less crucial, but it is nice to have because it makes them both the exact same. However, this one I think adds a lot of uh, value to this kit. I think, I think it helps you out a tremendous amount. So if y'all are interested in that, um, yeah, just let us know in the comments. Maybe we'll throw some of these up on the, on the website. So if you decide to make one yourself, it should make this step significantly easier. Dylan made a template of the client's baseboards, so now those need to be transferred onto the side pieces of the cabinet. This is going to allow the Murphy bed to push all the way against the wall and not have to remove any molding. Design this bed to have a face frame go on the front and that just gets attached with some glue and brad nails. This is going to allow this to look more like a piece of furniture rather than an obvious Murphy bed. In fact, to go the extra mile, he sanded the two middle boards in place, leaving one unattached so that the center edges can get a slight round over and give the illusion of the entire front to be two doors that swing open. It's the little details that go a long way. got a lot of work done this morning. We've got basically all of our face frames done. We have the face frames on the front of the bed, which was a big task, and a lot of the detail work done, which is nice. So we're pretty much waiting for glue to dry and then do some minor sanding and edge work and then should be able to basically assemble the cabinet. However, there is one last detail that we need to do, which is a fluted panel for the doors, which is something we haven't ever really made before, but we're gonna be using the CNC to make it. So kind of figuring that out right now, and we're gonna get set up and start making some test cuts and make these fluted panels. Got a lot of moving to do. Yeah, lots of stuff in the way. <laughs> not, not, not ideal having a small shop and building cabinets. If you're making cabinets, you really need a lot of room, but we make do. You gonna make it? I'm gonna make it. You gonna be okay? Yes. What's going on? Oh. What's going on? My baby. What? What happened? We got her fixed. She got her spay treatment today? Yeah, she got a little snip. Oh. I don't know how that works in dogs, but... <laughs> 
We're about to get to go pick her up. No, she's going to be all loopy. It's going to make me sad. Oh, goodness. <laughs> For those of you that haven't seen the story of Luna, who is our rescue pup, we actually found her while we were filming one of these videos, what, like seven months ago? Mm -hmm. And over the last seven months, she has been battling her way back to good health. So she had a pretty substantial uh, amount of, of issues that she had to work through, including heartworm. So she's finally heartworm negative. And that was the last sort of uh, thing that she had to get over before she could ultimately get spayed. And so that sounds like it went well today and we're about to get to go pick her up. But it was very sad because she's already been through so much and she's finally, you know, good and, and healed and everything. And then she wakes up this morning and she doesn't get to eat. That was pitiful. Yeah. This... She has this whole routine in the morning, you know, she doesn't get to eat. She's just constantly looking at us like, what the heck's going on? I don't know what's going on. And then you have to drop her off the vet. It's pitiful. So hopefully this is the last thing that she has to deal with. And uh, she won't have to, she won't back, she won't have to be back there. It's the last expected thing. Yeah, last, last hopefully <laughs> thing that she has to, to get through to uh, just be a happy, healthy dog. So yeah, about to go pick up. Our sweet little baby. Welcome home. Welcome home. Right to her bed. Oh, come in and you'll go in, my baby. So we'll go inside and lay it down, okay? That's a good girl. Well, I've been working in the shop all morning by myself because Molly has been in with Luna comforting her because uh, she had a pretty rough night, unfortunately. Couldn't get comfortable and was just, uh, yeah, just didn't have just didn't have a great evening. Neither did we because uh, obviously she was up most of the night. However, this morning I have gotten this entire side of the fluted paneling done that goes in the door, uh, which looks like a very complicated thing. But I'm going to share with you guys my workflow from start to finish of creating these awesome fluted panels that uh, once primed and everything are going to blend perfectly in. Although they are, the joints are pretty darn tight as is. So uh, let's get to it. The first thing we're going to do is open up Aspire and click the create new file. Aspire is the program that I use to create the files that our CNC actually uses to cut things. So you start off over here. This is a single sided job. The width is 25 inches. The height is 22 inches. This is the exact size of our panel and it is a half of an inch thick. We're going to be zeroing to the material surface and we are going to have our work home position at the bottom left hand corner. Click OK. Now I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'm gonna create a new layer. I like to use layers in here. I'm gonna call these uh, this layer flutes. And I'll change the color so that we can see it a bit easier. Grab the line tool here. I'm gonna draw a line from the top to bottom. Click, press space bar to get out. Then I'm going to take that line. I'm gonna select it, hit the array copy and I've already got this set up properly here, so I'm going to make 34 columns to the right. They're gonna be spaced uh, three quarters of an inch apart, and I'm gonna group those copies, so I'll click Copy. I'll close. I'll use the Align to the Center tool here, which is gonna get those lines lined up in the center of the panel. Now, our bit is three quarters of an inch diameter, but it is only cutting three eighths round over. So as it comes through each of these, it'll create a three eighths inch round over on each side, thus creating a three quarter inch flute, which you'll see here in a second. Now, one thing that I wanna do is select all these again. I wanna hit the scale tool and I want to not link these and I wanna make them 23 inches long, which just means that it's going to start and end off of our panel so that uh, we get nice through cuts on both sides. I'll close that. I'll select our profile toolpath. The starting depth is zero because we're starting at the top of our material. And then we're going to cut down into that material 
0.365 inches, which is just a bit more than 3 eighths of an inch, which again is the roundover size, which means that it's actually going to cut a little bit of a square in there, but it's going to create a full circle in, in doing that. I had to play around with that a bit, and this seemed to be the best solution. I'll select our bit. Now I'm going to go on the line, so it's actually going to be centered on each of these lines as the, as the bit. It's going to be going down the center, and we don't need any tabs. We don't need any ramps. Um, we're going to call this uh, flutes for the toolpath, even though we're only going to have one singular toolpath. Click Calculate. So that's going to calculate our toolpath here for us. Now we could do conventional or climb. I'll show you the difference. So it's just, you know, which way it starts and stops. In this instance, it really doesn't matter. Although, if we wanted to, we could actually come in here, spend a little extra time, and connect these so that the bit travels up and down. And it would be slightly more efficient if we were doing a lot more of these panels. But this will work for us. So I'll click co Close. Go to the 3D view so that we can get an idea of what the heck this is actually going to look like. Make sure that we're, you know, doing this the way that we're, we're thinking we are. So open up the 3D panel tab here. Preview all toolpaths. You can see it generates that, and there is our nice fluted panel. So now all we do is close that, select the toolpath we want, hit the Save Toolpath button here, and we'll click Save and put that into a folder on uh, a place where we can get to it for the CNC's computer. We're using this Whiteside 1580 3 quarter inch pointed roundover bit. It's a mouthful. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Getting that thing loaded up and starting up our Mach 4, which is the software that the CNC actually is controlled with. And we're gonna start by homing the machine, which is always important. This gets everything square and aligned and make sure that the actual CNC knows where the heck it is in space. Now I'm adding my panel part here and I'm using this really cool nailer that shoots these composite nails, which means that we can machine directly through them and they're easy enough to pop off when we're done. Now we're using the Auto Z touch plate to get our Z height, which is just the material height. As the bit comes down and touches, it actually tells the computer where the material surface is so it knows where to start. And then all we have to do is jog the machine over and find the corner. Now I could use the corner finder, but with this bit, because of the way it's shaped, it's much easier to just jog it over, zero the X and Y as I just did there. And now it's time to load our G code. There's a preview of it. And all we have to do now is turn on our dust collector and fingers crossed, hit cycle start, and this thing should start cutting. While the Avid CNC is working away on the current panel, I take the prior panel over to the table saw and cut it down to its final size. This is a good way to keep busy while that machine is going and is also one of the benefits of a CNC. It's kind of like having a second person working in the shop. So as soon as I got that cut down, I actually take it over to the workbench and sand it as well so that I stay busy. And this is usually about the time that it finishes up the last panel. I then go around and create a simple round over on all the inside corners prior to installing the panel. I then use the shop vac to clean up the mess of the router as well as clean up the panel itself so that we get a nice glue surface and we don't have any sort of dust that's going to compromise that glue joint. Then we go ahead and add our glue to the section where the panel is going to be and I actually have this 23 gauge pin nailer which leaves these tiny little needle-like uh, nails and basically require no filler. It's really nice to hold things down while glue dries and I don't know if you noticed but that fit was pretty darn good. To fill all the not so great sections and the areas where I have larger nails and screws, I'm using Total Boat's Fix Wood product, which is a two-part epoxy putty, which is both waterproof and shrink-proof, so it's a really great option for a very durable 
uh, filler here. So I'm trying this out actually for the first time and I have to say I do like it. It dries pretty darn quick and it's very sandable if that makes sense. Like a lot of these things are kind of mucky when you go to sand them. This stuff gets really hard and creates a really nice surface. It, it's almost similar to Bondo in a way. It feels much more like that than a standard filler but so far I like it a lot. Now for a really tedious bit, I used a tiny little file to go in between all these fluted panels and get all the little scraggly pieces out of the grooves. I had to suck them out with a shop vac, but it made a big difference in the overall quality of these panels. Now on the back of this cabinet, there is actually a wall outlet, and one of my favorite ways to deal with wall outlets and cabinets is to use a track saw to first score the area so you get a really nice clean area on the front side, and then I'll come back with a jigsaw and actually cut the area out. Last thing I like to do is add a large chamfer to the side that you see to give this sort of an appearance of trim instead of there just being a random cutout in the back of the cabinet. And now finally, the last part of this video is I am going to struggle to put this cabinet together by myself because Molly was taking care of Luna and I was just overly ambitious, but yeah, I ended up getting it together and uh, this is going to be the last section of the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We are gonna have the final part coming out in just a few days showing the install and the paint and finish and all that sort of stuff. And you'll get the final picture. But so far this project is coming along quite nicely. Be sure to leave a comment down below if you enjoyed the video or have any questions at all. And thank you guys so much for watching.